Hello, welcome to the City of Medford. We're very pleased to have Lieutenant Governor Polito with us today to announce the community contact agreement that we reached, as well as our representative, Christine Barber. We have City Councilor Rick Carviello, and we have School Committee woman Kathy Kretz Hi. here as well. So thank you all for coming. This certainly is a, a great day for the City of Medford. As you know, we, um, we applied in the month of January for three different compacts, uh, one having to do with financial accountability in our, in our city. We currently use multiple programs to do our treasury and our financial packages, as well as over on the school side. Uh, we're, we're looking to create efficiencies by looking at the compact to look into one software program that can do everything and leading to transparency with the public and an open checkbook system. So it's a high goal, it's close to my heart. I have worked with all the programs as my prior career as budget director. So I know firsthand the efficiencies that can be garnered by this compact agreement. Uh, secondly, we have our Complete Streets initiative that we have talked about a great deal over the last several months. Uh, we're very eager to get that off the ground. Uh, we want to include all of our bike ped people in the process and our art people as well, so that we do, com when we talk complete streets, we mean complete <laughs> streets. But I'm going to introduce Cassandra Kudalidis, our city engineer, up to the podium to just say a few words on that. Thank you, Mary Burke, and good morning, everybody. Um, we're, I'm excited to be part of this program for complete streets. You know, with uh, it's taking it on as one of our best pra practices, the objective is to enhance all the movements from any place that you may imagine going, from home to work, from home to school, from school to retail, and likewise. So we recognize that um, this program is for all uses of all ages and all abilities, and that's very important. The policy will call for, um, for all roadway projects that are within um, our control to look at complete streets, whether it's routine maintenance, reconstruction, and um, any type of garden overlay or any type of other system. I want to be able to use this program uh, along with my colleagues and anyone else involved in the city to look at a network approach. So we're thinking about not just advancing projects on a street-by-street -street basis, but taking a, a zoom-out look at them and looking at um, bike routes and walking routes and transit routes, have an overlay and see where the gaps are and how we can figure out to close those gaps and make it more attractive and pleasing for everyone to use. Um, also, there's, um, you know, I think that Bedford is a great city with which to walk or to bike, you know, as well as to drive. You know, we're not discounting uh, motorists and freight operators and public safety personnel, but, you know, we want to be able to create safe facilities. We want to have locations where people can come and um, sit and take in their surroundings, maybe benches along certain paths, and we're going to be looking at things like that. And we all recognize that there's this no one-size-fits-all um, approach. Everything has to be looked in context and connectivity. And to that, we'll also be talking to uh, private developers and other people in other cities and towns that link up with uh, Medford. There's uh, Winchester is now going to use a bike path um, installed on Winthrop Street that wants to connect to ours. So that's another way of connectivity from uh, community to community. So I just want to say that we're all excited about this. We sent our letter of intent into the state to become a complete streets community has been accepted and we're now finishing our policy and working on the prioritization plan. And thank you for allowing me to sit today. Thank you, Cassandra. <laughs> Cassandra has worked uh, a great deal on this project along with Alicia Hunt and I believe Lauren DiLorenzo. Uh, so a lot of the staff has been involved in this process. So we're very happy for your hard work on this and reaching this initiative. Uh, the last item has to do with Medford Square. I think over the course of the last eight months, if I heard Medford Square revitalization once, I've heard it a thousand times. It is a key component to our city's future, to our economic development, and it needs the attention. Um, and this will enable us to have planning dollars put to the table so that we can reach our potential. I think that we all realize that Medford's a great community, a third of it open space. We're very lucky to live here, but we have so much potential that we can reach. And this, this initiative, in particular, is going to be a fabulous, a fabulous add-on to our community already. So I'd like to introduce Lauren DiLorenzo, who is our Community Development Director, to say a few words on this topic. Thank you, Mayor Burke. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm Lauren DiLorenzo, the Director of Community Development. I'd like to welcome the Lieutenant Governor here to Medford. It's good to see you. And Representative Barber, thank you very much. And also Linda Gary, who's from the Mayor's uh, Economic Development Transition Committee, has been working 
very hard on the uh, various economic development initiatives in, uh, in um, Medford Square, and for, I think Linda and I have worked on Medford Square probably for 20 years. <laughs> when Mayor Burke came in, she uh, has asked that we prioritize in each of our departments, really take a fresh look at things and to move forward objectives and goals and initiatives that have uh, been stalled or haven't been properly funded or haven't had really the resources to move ahead. And the really the Baker and uh, Polito administration has worked hard with cities to work on uh, helping support them to implement current best practices. And best practices really are current initiatives, policies, procedures, uh, goals, objectives, designs, all these array of resources that are available and um, have been shown to work and succeed in other communities. So the community compact is really that pledge that the mayor is taking to commit to the various uh, efforts to improve and bring the city of Medford current. So our department, which does housing and community development, will be part of that, and that's what this portion of the community compact is. I'd also like to recognize Nick Downing, who's from MAPC, who's here, working with <coughs> Government Affairs. Uh -huh. um, so, yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. so MAPC, uh, working also with the governor's office, has uh, refocused some of their programming to support the community compact efforts and best practice efforts. So the city of Medford applied for a direct <coughs> local technical assistance grant. And we were told by MAPC, and I believe the governor probably mentioned this, mm -hmm. that we uh, will be getting some resources, funding, about $40,000 worth of planning resources to assist the Community Development Office to conduct the Medford Square Economic Development Strategy that Mayor Burke was uh, speaking about. So what we will do is we've, we've done a master plan before, and again, as I said before, because of limited resources, changes in economics, some things haven't been implemented that... Uh, really in need in order to succeed in having a vibrant downtown area. So we'll work with MEPC and we will partner and we will have a process, have some civic engagement. I think people are very interested in speaking what their ideas are and what their concerns are. So that will happen. And we will uh, look at really things like physical space, what needs to be improved physically in Medford Square. We've talked about improving the retail positioning. A lot of people want re more retail diversity in Medford Square. We'll look at that. Always we look for opportunities for new housing and um, to look at zoning and permitting. Uh, Medford has been pro-development, uh, but at, not at the cost of neighborhood character or impacts in uh, neighborhoods. So I think that in zoning and permitting, we're pretty good at it, but again, we want to bring the current best practices to make sure that we are supporting business development in a timely manner, and which will also increase tax bases and improve our schools and all those other things that are done uh, necessary for tax bases. So I just want to thank you and uh, look forward to working with you. Thank you. Great. Lauren, one piece Lauren feels to mention is we want to create a hub to our river. We're a community that has the Mystic River running yes. through it. And we need to bring attention to that asset because it really is one of our greatest assets along with the Bells. So we really want to um, create an environment that is open to the river. And we just want to acknowledge Mohammed Chowdhury, who's also on one of my, the transition team for economic development, who's worked hard as well on the various open meetings that we've had over the course of the last several months. Um, I'd also like to, uh, Representative Barber to say a few words. She's our partner. She's part of our state delegation. She goes to bat for us on a number of issues, and we appreciate having her in our community. So please. Yeah. <coughs> um, first and foremost, I want to congratulate the mayor and the city of Medford for the announcement of the community compact today. This is um, a great step in three things that we hear all the time from constituents and community members in Medford. Transparency in government greater mobility to get around various forms of transportation, and economic development that is, that is improving the community and really benefiting the community. These are things that we've been talking about for a long time, and this compact agreement is, is taking some really important steps in moving forward on all three of those, and it's, it's a great thing, so I'm glad that it's being announced today. Um, we are also stronger when we work together, so I'm so pleased to have Lieutenant Governor here today um, to announce this compact. It's great to have um, her and the Governor's support here in Medford. 
Speaker of the House, as well as the Senate President, has been trying to work closely with the governor um, because we all do need to work together to address some of the issues that are facing our cities. It's wonderful to have this announcement today, and I want to thank you all for being here. Thank you. just heard, both the complete streets and the revitalization of Method Square go hand in hand. So we're looking for, to look at things from a global perspective to bring the best we can to Medford. And without further ado, I need to introduce our Lieutenant Governor, who's been instrumental in this entire process with communities. Uh, she's worked so hard over the last year plus uh, to open up the dialogue between the cities and towns and the State House. So we really appreciate all her hard work. And we are very lucky to have her in our city today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mayor Burke and Representative Barber, and to the Councilors School Committee members and your leadership team, which I uh, take note, there's a lot of strong women leaders uh, right here in this room and uh, leading, leading the charge here in uh, Medford. So congratulations to you. Uh, and, and it's great to be in this room. I did visit uh, Mayor McGlynn and coming to the mayor's office and you know he did an incredible job for many years with his team and we, we thank him for his leadership for Medford. And when, when there's a change in administration, there's an opportunity to just assess you know, where the community is and then really engage in conversation with your transition team and your leadership team about what can you build on and do better with? And that's exactly where we found ourselves a little more than a year ago when Governor Baker and I came into office. And it's a really great moment. So I'm glad that you have embraced it and you're, you're doing things with it. I feel a lot of good energy uh, in the building today. Uh, one of the first things we did uh, when coming into office was to, to figure out uh, how do we build on the campaign message that we had. Let's make Massachusetts great from one end of the state to the other. And um, I said to the governor, soon after being sworn in, now we have 351 cities and towns uh, to assist and, and figure out how to make every community great. You know, good schools, you know, safe neighborhoods, opportunity, jobs, and economic prosperity. And so we figured that this should be a, a, a program around a partnership that as former local officials ourselves, we served as selectmen in our respective uh, home town areas. And, we knew that this should be a, a partnership. We knew also that it should be voluntary. We shouldn't be the state government telling the cities and towns, this is what you sh shall do. It should be an organic, voluntary sort of movement of municipal leaders you know, choosing to find a way to do things better in their community. We all realize that success is never final. And so it's a voluntary program of best practices. And then second of all, we also knew from our days as local officials that it has to be funded. We cannot have an, an unfunded you know, mandate of sorts. It needs to be a funded program. Resources have to tie directly into the best practices so you can actually get them done. And so that's how we formed the program. And it's meant to serve all the communities, whether you're rural, suburban, or an urban area uh, like Medford that has a, a blend of residential neighborhoods open spaces and an urban feel in some places. You've got a really great uh, community that offers an awful lot. So the com compact program is perfect for you uh, in terms of the transition time that you're in. And I love that you were able to engage your team and you decided that these were the three areas that you wanted to focus on and that you chose three. You didn't have to. I know. You, <laughs> you being high achievers here, I uh, chose three uh, to really embrace. And it gives you the sense of um, taking that snapshot, in particular, you know, Metro Square, and wondering, you know, where do we go from here? So I'm thrilled that um, MAPC, through the, the uh, DLTA funds, can assist you in achieving the Medford Square plan. Uh, Complete Streets is fantastic as you're looking to make this a more walkable and accessible community. And then just, you know, really using technology mm -hmm. uh, to streamline uh, your financial system here. Uh, to one financial uh, unit is really uh, terrific. So uh, thank you, all of you. It's not just your mayor leading the charge, it's all of you uh, taking a part in this uh, community compact. So just to give you some perspective, this is a program that's really taken off. You are the 156th community to actually sign a compact in, in less than a year of this program. So apparently there's been a strong desire 
to have a really good partner uh, with the state in a program like this. And uh, one more point is it gives you bonus points for wanting to do better in your community. And those bonus points are really important. When it comes time for you, you may decide or learn from your study that you'll need infrastructure funds. And you may decide to apply for a MassWorks grant. Well, on the scoring sheet for the MassWorks grant, uh, you will get scoring points, extra points, for having joined the Community Compact Program. Or uh, you may, through your Complete Streets uh, initiative here, be prepared for a project. We have $12.5 million that we've added to the Complete Streets Fund, so you may seek to apply to that program uh, for project funds. So you're doing all the right things. That's why I wanted to physically be here on behalf of the Baker and Polito administration to say thank you for what you do and that we'll continue to partner through this program and others. Let me just say a profound thank you to our friends in the legislature. Uh, Representative Barber is someone that brings a lot of energy to her work and her advocacy for this community. Uh, first and foremost, uh, the vote that the House of Representatives took yesterday and the Senate will take today relative to the opioid bill is <coughs> profound. It's historic in Massachusetts and historic nationwide uh, that we are a, a, a commonwealth that knows we need to take stronger steps forward to, to reduce the amount of exposure and uh, addic addiction in our commonwealth relative to opioids and heroin. And, and Representative Barber was a big part of that vote yesterday. I uh, also want to thank her and her colleagues in the legislature for uh, their work on uh, local aid and school aid and providing you uh, the resources you need to do your jobs. You are in the thick of your uh, financial uh, budgeting and all of the work you do at council, and uh, you need to be able to rely on uh, the state resources to be there for you as you plan your budget for the next fiscal year. Uh, we don't do that alone in the executive branch. We do that in concert with the state legislature, and it's another example of how we're working together. And I think that's an important uh, thing to point out, that when government works together, putting the political uh, partisan thinking aside and really looking to collaborate to get things done is very impactful. And that's another uh, thing that we can embrace and celebrate today. So congratulations, um, Bayer Burke, and to all of you for signing up the compact today. It's a pleasure and honor uh, to be here with you. And I know that MAPC and uh, members of our staff will continue to work with you in the months ahead to see the fulfillment of the best practices you have chosen today. Wonderful. Congratulations. Thank you. if I didn't mention the municipal modernization bill oh, that the yes. governor's office and Lieutenant Governor Polito spearheaded. I know personally the city of Medford submitted maybe seven pages of suggestions <laughs> of things that we thought could modernize the way that we do business in our city and throughout the Commonwealth. And it was through her leadership that the bill was offered to the House and Senate. So we look forward to working on one package. Hopefully it goes through swiftly so that we're able to enact some of these key uh, money-saving opportunities and in public bidding and in reform for our alcohol licenses, etc. Yes, so thank you for all your hard work that you've yes. done on behalf of the entire Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Well, now we get to get it yeah. done, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you will. Well, and at this energy. point, we'd like to sign the compact. Let's do it. Sign together? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. And now we can take a group picture holding up.